welcome friends in this video we will discuss about the dynamics and we will start with kinematics of particles so let us start so kinematic relationships are used to help us determine the trajectory of a golf ball you can determine how a golf ball will move then you can determine the orbital speed of a satellite then you can find the accelerations during the acrobat flying and so on whenever there are some motion of objects you can use kinematic relationships to determine the path of the object Particle kinetics includes rectilinear motion. So, in rectilinear motion, position, velocity, and acceleration of a particle is along a straight line. As you can see, this train is moving in the straight line, or you might have seen the straight roads. Okay. Similarly, uh, uh, aeroplane during the flight okay and uh, another is the curvilinear motion in curvilinear motion position velocity and acceleration of a particle is along a curved line in two or three dimensions the curved line may be in 2d or it may be in 3d now we will discuss the rectilinear motion so consider the particle is moving in a straight line this is the straight line and suppose initially the particle is at point o and after traveling a distance x it moves to the pole point p okay So, this P defines the position coordinate of the particle. So, it can be positive if the particle is moving towards the positive x axis or positive direction, and if it is moving in the opposite direction, then the displacement is negative. So, you can define your origin and uh, you can define your direction. So accordingly, you can treat the motion uh, displacement as positive or negative. So it all depends on you. Suppose you can define the origin here also. Here also, you can consider the left direction as positive or right direction as positive. So it's up to you. But usually, uh, the direction in the right side is considered as positive in most of the books. And direction in the left side is considered as negative okay the motion of a particle is known if the position coordinate for particle is known for every value of time so you can 
know how the particle is moving if you know the position of the particle with respect to time and uh, sometimes it can be expressed as a some function for example like this equation x is equal to 6 t square minus t q so in this equation you can put the value of time and you can find the position of the particle so that where is your particle okay and uh, you can also show in the form of a graph so this is a graph of x versus t so at different time intervals this graph is showing the position of the particle okay so either you can represent in the form of an equation or you can represent in the form of a graph now consider a particle p which is occupying a position p at time t okay and after a small time interval delta t the same particle is occupying a position p dash okay so what is the average velocity average velocity will be the average distance which is delta x divided by the time taken to reach cover this system which is delta t so average velocity will be delta x by delta t and if you want to find the instantaneous velocity at a particular instant then you can take the limit delta t tends to zero the instantaneous velocity will be limit delta t tends to zero of del x by del t now instantaneous velocity may be positive or negative okay so if you are moving in the positive direction then this instantaneous velocity will be positive as shown here and if you are moving in the negative direction then this velocity will be negative okay and the magnitude of velocity is referred as particle speed so if the velocity even if the velocity is negative but if you take the magnitude then magnitude is always positive and that positive magnitude you call at speed so this is the difference between the velocity and speed velocity can be positive or negative depending on the direction but speed will always be positive now the from this definition we can also write in the form of a derivative because limit del t tends to zero means we can write it del x by del t as dx by dt and suppose the equation of the motion of particle is x is equal to t t square 6 t square minus t cube so if you want to find out the velocity then what you can do you can simply differentiate this so by differentiating you can obtain v, v which will be equal to dx by dt and now the differentiation is 6t square will be 12t and 3t uh, tq will be minus 3t square so this is the differentiation now you can calculate the velocity by simply putting the value of time at different points and you can obtain this curve okay so this is how if uh, you know the equation of the motion of the particle then you can calculate the velocity acceleration now acceleration will be given like this suppose at t the velocity of the particle is v and after a small time interval delta t when our particle is at p dash then suppose the velocity of the particle is v plus delta v okay so similar to the velocity you can write the expression for instantaneous acceleration and instantaneous acceleration a will be equals to del v by del t limit del t tends to zero and uh, again your instantaneous acceleration may be positive so when it is positive when the positive velocity is increasing okay suppose you are having two meter per second velocity and it is increasing towards three four then your acceleration is positive 
and it will be positive again when decreasing negative velocity okay so suppose your velocity is minus 2 and it is decreasing towards minus 3 so in that case also your acceleration is positive <coughs> and uh, your acceleration is negative when decreasing positive velocity so initially the velocity is plus 4 and it is decreasing towards 3 or 2 then your acceleration is negative or increasing negative velocity so suppose the velocity is minus 4 and it is increasing towards the minus 3 okay so this is how you can uh, calculate the whether your acceleration is positive or negative okay these are the four conditions and again you can simply calculate the acceleration by simply differentiating the equation so if you know the equation of velocity then you can simply differentiate as dv by dt or alternatively you can double differentiate the expression for displacement so for the same expression you will get the velocity as uh, 12 t minus 3 t square and when you differentiate this you can calculate the acceleration which is equal to 12 minus 60 and this is the acceleration graph acceleration versus t so you can see this is the negative acceleration okay so initially it is 12 and then it is decreasing and reaching a negative value yes this is your question what is the true about the kinematics of a particle so you have to find the true statement among them first statement is the velocity of a particle is always positive second the velocity of a particle is equal to the slope of the position time graph third is if the position of a particle is zero then the velocity must zero and fourth is if the velocity of a particle is zero then its acceleration must be zero so just think for a few seconds the answer is b the velocity of a particle is equal to the slope of the position time graph okay again move towards the same problem so this is the equation for motion by differentiating you can calculate the velocity by double differentiating you can calculate the acceleration now once you know all these expressions then if you want to calculate the position velocity and acceleration at different times then what you need to do you will simply put the value of time in these equations so at t is equal to 2 second x will be 16 velocity is 12 and acceleration is 0 okay so this is shown here at t is equal to 2 so this slope is parallel to the time axis that means when v max occurs then a is equal to 0 so whenever maximum velocity reaches at that point acceleration is 0 and the slope of the velocity curve is 0 at this point so if you look at this curve v curve velocity curve so at all other points slope will not be zero and at this point where you are having maximum velocity slope will be zero similarly you can calculate the position velocity and acceleration at t is equal to 4 and these are the values x will be 32 v is 0 and a is equal to minus 12 meter per second square so this is how you can calculate the position or velocity and acceleration at different times if you know the position of a particle as a function of time so this is all for this lecture meet you soon in the next lecture till then thank you have a nice day